Hello, I'm Chrissy Mundo. It's good to have your company. Nana Akufo Addo has been sworn in for a fresh term as president in Ghana. He narrowly won re election in the vote on December 7th last year. Now, ahead of his inauguration, there were scenes of chaos in the country's parliament. Clashes between opposing parties erupted after a lawmaker seized the ballot box during a vote for the parliament speaker. Eventually, the army was forced to intervene to stop the violence. And for more on this, we've invited Esther Armand to the program. She's a political commentator in Ghana and joins us uh, from Accra. Good to see you, Esther. So as we just saw there, clashes breaking out in Parliament just ahead of the president swearing in. What is fueling this tension? So we have had a challenging and uh, divisive political season, the, um, the presidential campaigning in the context amid the backdrop of the devastation of COVID, the lockdown, the pandemic has absolutely fueled political tensions. And so we've seen that explosion on the streets that culminated into scenes that would have triggered trauma for thousands and thousands of Ghanaians who lived through the military coups of 1966, 1979 and 1981. Two sea soldiers in battle fatigue coming through into the seat of government and scenes of unrest would literally harken back to a history that Ghana has long left behind. Mm. But it also echoed in some instances, what was happening with the military in Ghana was happening with right. um, the citizens in the United States of America. So this global framework of unrest Esther. with politics and campaigning in this moment. Esther, the president, uh, his inauguration, President Nana Akufo-Addo's inauguration, is taking place even as half of the country doesn't accept his election victory. I don't know that half of the, the country doesn't accept the victory is a fair enough um, um, reality. Certainly, the contesting of the results is not a new space for us here in Ghana. We have been here before. It is not the contesting that's the issue, it's the resolution of that contesting. It is the choice, finally, for the NDC to actually go through the legal framework, which, is, which, which it is entitled to do, and most importantly, to desist from the kinds of violence on the streets that is traumatizing for millions of citizens who remember what this violence mm. spoke to and triggered and Esther, unrest, and es Esther, instability. You, we don't you, want that. Esther, you, you said it yourself that this was a very uh, divisive election. There were reports of violence. Five people were killed. How did it get to this in Ghana? This is the country hailed as the beacon of democracy in Africa. So, you know, to be clear, we always have to talk about nations not in the context of some political democratic utopia. Ghana is a nation in, in putting context. It's a nation with a history of political violence. And thankfully, there has been um, a peacefulness for many, many years. But we have to put what happened for this election season in the context of a pandemic that has absolutely devastated the economy and made... The, the, just the environment much more fraught. When you stitch together those realities, then mm. elements of this violence are, are not surprising, but it makes them no less disturbing. Right, Esther, before my next question, uh, we just want to play you a, a couple of views from ordinary Ghanaians talking about what they see as the main challenges for the new president. Corruption. Yeah. He promised to fight against it, so I, to my opinion, I think he's doing his best because he's a human being and then he can't do everything just in four years. So with this four years, we pray and hope he does better. As a developing country, our major problem is, you know, job, 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 you know. So as for job, as for the age, we all want jobs. So he should tackle the jobs very, very well. The, the, uh, those uh, policies that the president initiated, uh, the free free senior high school i mean planted for food and jobs and i mean a lot of i think i pray that he, he continue and do better you know because a lot of people really appreciate the the the, the initiative that he had
So we've heard there, Esther, jobs, uh, corruption, education, important to the people we've just listened to. What more can you tell us about what President Nana Akufo Addo needs to prioritise and do in his next five years? When we think specifically about the economy, I think we need to double down, not just on the, re the importance of jobs, but the kinds of jobs that are being created. What does it mean to strengthen an infrastructure around issues of health, of mining? What does it mean to think about an entrepreneurial um, power and an entrepreneurial economy that centers women, 52% of Ghana's nation, and who dominate when it comes to actually employing people? but who are also always locked out of access to finance. Issues that are long-standing and that have been exacerbated by the pandemic. So yes, jobs, corruption is a long-standing um, issue that always requires being tackled. But the pandemic offers Ghana an opportunity to reimagine an economy that centers the absolute flourishing of indigenous um, expertise, indigenous uh, activity, uh, women and youth. And those are the specific areas that I think the president needs to um, focus on. Not, not more rhetoric, but the reality of reimagining that because of the pandemic. All right, that's Esther Armour talking to us uh, from the Ghanaian capital, Accra. Thank you, Esther.